Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice algebra problem which is x plus 3 raised to the power of 6. This is equal to 2 to the power of 6. What are the values of x given that x is not equal to 0? So let's prevent the solution to this problem. So we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 6. This is equal to 2 to the power of 6. The first step to do here, let's take 2 to the power of 6 on the left hand side so that we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 6 subtract 2 to the power of 6. This is equal to 0. The first step to do here, we can express x plus 3 to the power of 6 as x plus 3 raised to the power of 3 and then raised to the power of 2 subtract 2 to the power of 6, which is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, raised to the power of 2, this is equal to 0. Now, this equation here is in the form of a squared minus b squared, which is the difference of two perfect squares, and this can be expressed as a plus b, a minus b. From this equation here, we have that a is equal to x plus 3, raised to the power of 3, and that b is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And therefore, a plus b, this is the same thing as x plus 3, raised to the power of 3, plus 2 to the power of 3, this is equal to 0. Let's call this equation 1. We have that a minus b, this is the same thing as x plus 3, raised to the power of 3. So we have a minus b, this is equal to x plus 3, raised to the power of 3, minus 2 to the power of 3, this is equal to 0. Let's call this equation 2. Now, let's start with equation 1, let's call this case 1. Now we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 3, then plus 2 to the power of 3, this is equal to 0. This equation here is in the form of a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, which we can express as a plus b, then a squared minus ab plus b squared. Applying this identity, then here we have x plus 3, plus 2. Then here we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 2. Then subtract 2 multiplying by x plus 3. Then plus 2 squared which is equal to 4. This is equal to 0. So here we have x plus 3 plus 2. This is 5. Then on the other side here, we have x squared plus, this is 6x, then plus 3 squared, which is 9, then subtract. Now, here we have 2 times x, this is minus 2x, minus 2 times plus 3, this is minus 6, then plus 4. Cross the parentheses here, this is equal to 0. Now here we have two parts, we have x plus 5, this is equal to 0, and on the other side here we have x squared, we have 6x minus 2x, so this is plus 4x, then we have 9 minus 6, this is 3, 3 plus 4, this is plus 7, this is equal to 0. Now from the first part here we have x1 is equal to minus 5. The second part here, this is the quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, this is equal to 0. From this quadratic equation here, we have that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and that c is equal to 7. So we can solve for x2, comma x3 by applying the quadratic formula, which is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, everything here 
parent by two times a. So let's substitute a, b, and c so that now we have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. This is 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, then times c, which is 7. Everything here, dependent by 2 times 1. So here we have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared. This is equal to 16 minus 7 times 4. This is 28. Everything here divided by 2. So this implies that here we have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 28. This is minus 12 over 2. So here we have minus 4 plus or minus. We can express the square root of minus 12 as 4 times 3 times minus 1. Everything here divided by 2. So this implies that here we have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 4. This is 2. The square root of minus 1. This is i. Then square root of 3. Everything here divided by 2. In the numerator here, we find that 2 is common here. So we can factor out 2 so that we have minus 2 plus or minus i square root of 3. Cross the parentheses, everything here, dependent by 2. So if we simplify 2 here, then this implies that we have minus 2 plus or minus i square root of 3. And this implies that we have x2 is equal to minus 2 plus i square root of 3. And x3, this is equal to minus 2 minus i square root of 3. So actually, these are two complex solutions here. These are two complex solutions under case 1. So let's proceed to case 3. I mean case 2 from here we have x2 and x3 these are the two complex solutions under case 1 so let's proceed to case 2 from here in case 2 we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 3 subtract 2 to the power of 3 this is equal to 0 now this equation here is in the form of a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3. And this is the difference of two cubes that we can express as a minus b. Here we have a squared plus ab, then plus b squared. So let's apply this identity so that now here we have x plus 3 minus 2. Then here we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 2. Then plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3. Then plus 2 squared. This is equal to 4. This is equal to 0. So here we have x plus 3 minus 2. This is actually plus 1. And then the next on the parenthesis here, x plus 3 to the power of 2. This is the same thing as x squared plus 6x then plus 3 squared, which is 9, then plus 2 times x, this is 2x, then 2 times plus 3, this is plus 6, then plus 4, cross the parentheses, this is equal to 0. So we have x plus 1 here. Here we have x squared, 6x plus 2x, this is 8x, then plus... Now we have 9 plus 6, this is 15, 15 plus 4, this is 19, this is equal to 0. We have two parts here, the first part is x plus 1, this is equal to 0, and the second part here is x squared plus 8x plus 19, this is equal to 0. From the first part here, we have x4. This is equal to minus 1. The second part is a quadratic equation here with a equal to 1 
B equal to 8 and C equal to 19. So we can solve for x5, x6 by applying the quadratic formula that's minus b plus or minus the square root of this is b squared minus 4ac everything here divided by 2 times a so applying this substituting the values of a b and c in this formula we have minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared subtract 4 multiplying by a which is 1 then multiplying by c which is 19 divided by 2 times 1 so here we have minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared this is equal to 64 then subtract 19 times 4 this is actually equal to 70 6 everything here divided by 2 so now we have minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 76 this is minus 12 divided by 2 so here we have minus 8 plus or minus we can express the, the square root of minus 12 as square root of 4 times 3 times minus 1. Everything here divided by 2. So here we have minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 4. This is 2. Square root of minus 1. This is i. Then square root of 3. Everything here divided by 2. So this implies that here we have minus 8 plus or minus. Now, this is 2i square root of 3 and this so here we have minus 8 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 over 2 so in the numerator 2 is common we can factor out 2 so that into the parentheses we have minus 4 plus or minus i square root of 3 everything here divided by 2 so if we simplify here then this implies that we have minus 4 plus or minus i square root of 3. And therefore, these are two complex solutions here. These are two complex solutions under case 2. And this totals to 6 solutions. We have 6 solutions from this algebra problem. That is x1 is equal to minus 5 x2 comma x3 this is actually equal to this is minus 2 plus or minus i square root of 3 we have x4 this is equal to minus 1 and we have x5 comma x6 this again are two complex solutions, which is minus 4 plus or minus i square root of 3. We have four complex solutions and two real solutions from here. So can you follow the steps? Like this video and subscribe. Country, like this video and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.